asymptotic resurgence of homogeneous ideals. Thank you. Uh, thank you, the organizers, uh, for having this conference here, inviting me to give a talk. Uh, this is the first uh, international conference that I am attending post-COVID. So it's <laughs> meeting a lot of people after a long time. It was really uh, exciting uh, to be here. It is still exciting to be here. Uh, and uh, I you know, <laughs> uh, clearly remember the last time I was in I ICTP. Uh, that was in 2004. I was, uh, I just, you know, I, uh, just a year after my uh, graduation, and uh, you know, uh, I remember being very, very nervous uh, giving a talk here uh, with, you know, the audience were full of people uh, whose papers I read and grew as a, you know, community algebraist. So it was like uh, Huneke was there, uh, Tito Walla, West Consulars, uh, you know, all, <laughs> Merlin, I was, all people, like, I was really nervous uh, at that time. I really, very, very, you know, clearly remember those, uh, <laughs> uh, those days. Uh, that was, I think, it held in Adriatico uh, at that time. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, thanks once again. Uh, so let me... Uh, begin my talk. This is a uh, joint work with uh, uh, Arvind Kumar and Vivek uh, Mukundan. So, uh, <clears throat> the basic problem is uh, what is known as a containment problem that uh, given an ideal, how are the containment relation between <clears throat> the symbolic powers and the ordinary powers? So symbolic powers, I think uh, we already have, a, uh, it's been already introduced in the uh, in this series of uh, talks. So uh, <clears throat> just uh, I, S, R localized at P intersection with R, P varies over associated primes. Uh, so the problem asks, given a T, find the least S such that I symbolic S is contained in I, T. So, uh, well, the, you know, uh, very, uh, gen very uh, generally stated problem. It's uh, you know, how do you answer this? So there was uh, you know a uh, lot of attempts in this direction. So uh, with a series of papers, uh, Irina Swanson, uh, starting with Irina Swanson, then Ian Lazarus Feld Smith, uh, Hoxter Hunike. I think these two papers. Uh, uh, this, uh, I think all these papers have already uh, been mentioned in a couple of talks here. Uh, and this is the most recent, uh, I think, in equicharacteristic uh, <clears throat> case. Uh, so uh, one has that i to the power ht, symbolic ht, is contained in i to the power t, where h denotes the big height. Big height is the maximal height of associated primes. That's uh, called the big height. Uh, so uh, with this, you know, <clears throat> uh, Hineke asks this question, can you refine this in some good cases? So for example, uh, this is a particular question that uh, Hineke has raised. If P is a high two prime ideal in a regular local ring of dimension three, so the Earlier theorem says that P symbolic 4 is contained in P2. But he, he asked whether P symbolic 3 is contained in P square. And this question is wide open. <clears throat> it's, uh, I think this, this is a couple of decades uh, old uh, problem, but it's uh, <laughs> known in only uh, very few cases. Uh, very recently, uh, there is this uh, proof by Griffo uh, in the case of uh, space monomial curves. And uh, in general, this is very wide open. It will be interesting to see some good classes of prime ideals, 
satisfying this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, affirmatively answering this question. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, I mean, taking a, a cue from this, uh, 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 this theorem, uh, Harbon asked a more general question that given a radical ideal in a regular ring, do we have a finer containment in general? Like, look at this uh, i to the power symbolic ht minus h plus 1. Is it contained in i to the power t? Uh, here, h is the big height. Okay. Whether this is true for all t, <coughs> uh, this is not true. There are counterexamples for uh, this one. Uh, but yes, this holds true uh, for some classes. It's uh, known for several classes of ideals. But then uh, Griffo refined this question and asked whether such an inclusion uh, holds true for large values of t, for all large values of t, whether we know that such a uh, containment holds. <clears throat> and that is, uh, of course, this is a very uh, recent uh, question. And uh, there are uh, some positive answers. So far, there are no uh, counterexample to this question. <clears throat> so uh, in understanding this containment problem, Bochy and Harbin uh, introduces uh, invariant called resurgence of an ideal i. So resurgence is defined as uh, rho of i equal to the supreme of s by t, where uh, i s is not contained in i t. <clears throat> so if you take a rational number, which is uh, uh, okay. So so the corollary to the theorem that was uh, you know, uh, earlier theorem is that rho, if I take an ideal in a regular ring, uh, radical ideal in a regular ring, rho i is less than or equal to the big height. So the importance of this rho i is that if you take, uh, if you take a rational number s by t, which is bigger than rho i, the resurgence, then that will ensure this containment. So rho i is related to the containment in this way, resurgence. So once you know the resurgence, you know the containment problem. <clears throat> so it's been, uh, you know, uh, the, the idea is to compute resurgence. Of course, it's a, it's a very difficult problem. Computing resurgence is uh, very hard. Uh, so in studying uh, resurgence, uh, Guado, Harbon, and Van Thuil introduced another invariant, which is uh, called asymptotic resurgence of i. So they uh, defined it like this, s by t, where i r, OK, this should be, uh, ah, yeah. i r s is not contained in i t for all large values of r. So one can, I mean, it's very easy to see that uh, the resurgence is bounded below, or asymptotic resurgence is bounded above by uh, <coughs> the resurgence. Uh, they, in fact, proved that uh, this such a sequence of inequalities. Uh, this is fairly obvious. And alpha i is the minimal degree of a minimal generator of i. And alpha hat i is the Waldschmidt constant. <clears throat> so they proved this uh, inequality. Uh, and then uh, now the question is whether, you know, I mean, how do you compute? How do you, uh, you know, get an upper bound, get a lower bound uh, for the asymptotic resurgence, for the resurgence, and see whether, you know, compute classes where you can actually uh, compute the, or you know, find classes where you can actually compute the resurgence and asymptotic resurgence. So uh, Griffo and then 
uh, work with uh, Griffo, Ishanicki, uh, and Mukundan, they showed that the stable Harbin conjecture is true if rho i or you know the asymptotic resurgence number, either the resurgence or the asymptotic resurgence is strictly less than a uh, big height of i. So in in the paper uh, with Griffo, uh, Griffo, Hinoki, and Mukundan, they call this. Uh, when this happens, we they call it expected resurgence. So, when an ideal has expected resurgence, the stable Harbin conjecture is true. One can state this uh, result in that way. <coughs> uh, now, coming back to the computation of uh, resurgence and asymptotic resurgence, one can ask how uh, how do you compute this? It's kind of stated in a supremum of a set of rational numbers. How do you compute this? It's really tough. Uh, one question would be to see whether you, know, you can reduce it to finite steps. That, so this is uh, uh, Dipaskel and Drabkin proved that if, if this holds true, then yes, one can use uh, certain methods to compute rho i in the sense that you can use, uh, uh, you can say that this comes from a finite set. The resurgence can be computed using uh, that set. You can reduce it to a finite uh, set. Uh, so <coughs> the, the idea is if the symbolic Riesz algebra is noetherian, then you know that in that case, rho i has expected resurgence, and therefore, uh, one can prove that this is a, a rational number. <coughs> I mean, see, when th that's the corollary of this uh, De Pascal Drabkin result, that then it becomes a finite, uh, I mean, it, it becomes a maximum of a finite set. Therefore, it's a rational number. In general, uh, it's not known. It's not proved otherwise, but it is not known whether it's a rational number, the uh, resurgence. <clears throat> okay, so we uh, we were trying to explore this. So first thing that we did was to uh, look at the, uh, you know, trying to see if we can get some nice upper bound for some nice classes. So this is uh, the first result that we have uh, in this direction is a generalization of uh, Griffo, Hunneke, uh, Mukundan theorem. So they prove this in a, a more <coughs> restricted setup. S is a regular local ring of dimension three uh, with some, uh, with very similar hypothesis. Uh, but we, we basically observed that the Techniques do not really require uh, all those restricted uh, hypotheses. And we could prove this uh, result that we got, if, if the ideal satisfies some nice uh, uh, conditions, then one can obtain a very sharp upper bound. Very sharp. P, oh yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, P prime, yes. There exists a prime ideal P such that this happens, yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is a very sharp upper bound in the sense that we have some nice uh, infinite class of ideals where this is uh, achieved. Uh, now, in this, in this direction, when we talk about the resurgence uh, uh, containment problem, uh, whenever we talk about examples, you know, to show that something is true, something is not true, uh, there are two types of examples that exist. One coming from the geometry and one coming from the combinatorial side. So the uh, geometrical examples are mainly, uh, I mean this, uh, I think, uh, Fermat's curve and then some uh, points and uh, projective plane, so it comes from that side. And the combinatorial side uh, comes from, this is precisely, I work in this uh, 
side of commutative algebra on the combinatorial side. So uh, our uh, all these uh, everything that I'll be dealing with in this uh, uh, talk will be examples will be combinatorial. This is one such. So this is uh, what is called edge ideal of uh, uh, odd cycle, cycle of length 2n minus 1. <clears throat> so in such case, we have, uh, we, have uh, uh, we can compute the resurgence and it is equal to this one. So it will turn out to be equal to this k will be equal to 1 and uh, uh, yeah, precisely that. <clears throat> Uh, so, so in this case, uh, the maximal ideal will act as the prime ideal required here. Okay. <clears throat> and then, you know, while dealing with this, uh, so we were looking for more examples or more, you know, ways of approaching the resurgence. So what we saw is that, uh, so in, in my paper with Tai and uh, uh, Sankhneel and Abu, uh, we looked at the resurgence of sum of ideals uh, where these ideals are generated uh, in distinct variables. So here we are looking at the uh, what happens to the resurgence uh, of the product. Okay. Uh, we also have a very similar result in the case of intersection with slightly uh, more restricted uh, hypothesis. Uh, but if you take i and j to be non-zero proper ideals generated in disjoint set of variables, so one is generated by x1 up to xn, the other is generated by y1 up to ym, I mean using these variables, polynomials in this, homogeneous polynomials in these variables, then the resurgence of the product is maximum of the resurgence of these two and the same holds true in the case of asymptotic resurgence as well. <coughs> And uh, as I mentioned, we uh, we proved certain uh, you know we proved certain bounds for the resurgence in, uh, in this paper with uh, Tai Ha, uh, uh, Sankhneel, and uh, Abu. Uh, so here we wanted to see what happens you know in in uh, in nice situations. Okay, we have certain two bounds. It's, it's we we have given upper bound and lower bound, and if the symbolic powers of uh, one of them coincide with the ordinary power, then this uh, row of i plus j is equal to, the asymptotic resurgence of the sum is equal to the, uh, I mean, resurgence of uh, i plus j, same as uh, resurgence of the other ideal, second ideal. <clears throat> and this is, this is basically used as a tool in, uh, in the more general situation. Uh, if you have several ideals, so each of them generated in distinct variables, and uh, we are assuming that you know uh, rho is equal to uh, for one to k of them. Okay. <clears throat> this uh, we are not really assuming that they are equal we are only assuming that rho is equal to 1. So here, the resurgence is equal to 1, not necessarily imply that the symbolic and ordinary powers are same. No, we just have the supremum to be equal to uh, 1. It need not necessarily imply. Okay. So here, uh, when... Uh, Oh, I think I this uh, this scraped in from here, cut and paste error. <laughs> I apologize for that. I'm sorry. So this is not there. Uh, then for all j from one, uh, sorry. Ha. Huh. Then this statement. Please delete. <laughs> okay. uh, the, the uh, resurgence of I1 up to IK is maximum of these numbers. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, we, we encountered all these uh, when we were looking at, uh, you know, resurgence 
uh, of square free monomial ideals. Okay, that's how we, we try to look at this one and then realize that, okay, we don't, to prove many of these results, we don't need uh, square free or homogeneous and, you know, several things. Uh, so we were looking at this result by DePascal and Drabkin. If I look at uh, an ideal in a, a polynomial ring, and ideal is a square free monomial ideal of big height H, then they proved that the asymptotic resurgence is less than or equal to 1 by L. L is the number of variables. <coughs> so uh, this is, uh, this can be a large bound. Uh, so what we, uh, what we have shown is that if I is a square free monomial ideal of big height H, then we have a containment uh, I symbolic H R minus H is contained in I R for all R bigger than or equal to chi of I. So this is an invariant that comes from the combinatorics. This is called, uh, what is called a, a chromatic number. So this asymptotic resurgence is less than or equal to H minus 1 by chromatic number. Uh, so what is exactly chromatic number? Let me give a quick. Uh, so if you have a graph, let's say, so uh, a coloring is a co I mean assignment of colors. A proper coloring is an assignment of colors to the vertices such that no edge is monochromatic in the sense both sides of the edge will have different colors. So the minimum number required to color such a, uh, you know, do a proper coloring is called the chromatic number. <coughs> and uh, it is, um, this is, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is a, what are called edge ideals. So let me quickly define what is an edge ideal. <coughs> if I have this uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, a graph on forward vertices, then I define this ideal x1, x2, x1, uh, x2, x3, x3, x4, and x4, x1. This in the polynomial ring, k, I just fix a field k, and look at the uh, ideal. So this, uh, this was uh, first defined by uh, Villarreal in 1990. And this, uh, I mean, a lot of study has gone into the, to understanding the correspondence between the algebra of this ideal and the combinatorics of the corresponding graph. <clears throat> so here, when we use this, uh, a chromatic number of this graph. So there is this uh, concept of uh, hypergraph. This is, uh, here, each edge will be represented by a pair of vertices. In a hypergraph, it can be a subcollection of vertices. It can be, it need not necessarily be uh, some, uh, it need not necessarily be uh, two. Uh, so, in that case, uh, the definition, there is a definition of chromatic number, etc., and it makes sense there. And it can also be seen that, or, you know, it can be proved that a cover ideal, any square free monomial ideal can be expressed as a cover ideal of a hypergraph. So, therefore, we have converted this problem into, uh, you know, combinatorial setup. And there, using the combinatorics, we have found a... Uh, a much finer upper bound. So this is, this can be, uh, or chi, uh, the chi of i, the chromatic number. If the graph is uh, what is called a star graph, like n vertices and there is a vertex at the center, then you can color, you can assign one color here and all these colors can be second color. That is a proper coloring. And therefore, you need only two colors to color such a graph, even if you have any number of vertices. So therefore, in such a case, this will be two. 
So it will be h minus 1 by 2, our bound will be h minus 1 by 2, while this will be h minus 1 by n. So <coughs> that way this is a much uh, finer upper bound. Uh, one can use some techniques to uh, get an upper bound, uh, uh, you know, use this to get an upper bound for the row, I mean, the resurgence as well, but it's, uh, uh, it requires some work. Uh, what we, okay, yeah, so this is the edge ideal, definition of edge ideals, and, uh, okay, and the cover ideal, this is uh, the main uh, part of our talk, what is called the cover ideal. A vertex cover is collection of vertices as a vertex cover if it intersects with every edge of the graph. Okay. And for each vertex cover, look at the product of all those variables and take the monomial and the mon look at the monomial ideal generated by those uh, monomials. And that's called the uh, cover ideal of the graph G. So these are nice uh, classes cover ideals are radical high to unmixed ideals. So one can, you know, it's a good class to check uh, these hard uh, conjecture, you know, hard problems. You can uh, try to see if they are true in this case or you can do something in this class. So what we have, uh, the first step, uh, four minutes I have, right? <clears throat> yeah. So uh, the first step is that we have uh, this is again, we're answering a question of Griffo. Uh, we have obtained some, uh, again using chromatic numbers, we have obtained a, a containment <coughs> relation. Uh, and this is uh, very uh, uh, nice bounds for the resurgence and the asymptotic resurgence. So given a graph G, omega G is the size of the largest complete graph. <clears throat> a click is the complete graph inside G. Size of the largest complete graph inside G. And this is alpha G is the maximum size of an independent set. Independent set is a set where, you know, set of uh, vertices where there are no edges between them. <clears throat> uh, so if you have these two, then one can bound the row and the uh, asymptotic resurgence with these two. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a, uh, I mean, philosophically, it's a beautiful bound in the sense that, you know, uh, the, uh, the resurgence and asymptotic resurgence defined in a very, very purely algebraic way, uh, but the bounds are purely combinatorial. It just, you know, define, you're, you're bounding it using uh, combinatorial invariance. So it's, it, it's, it, this gives another interaction between the uh, you know, algebraic invariance and, of the ideal and the uh, uh, combinatorial invariance of the graph. <clears throat> and uh, certain perfect graphs uh, where, you know, perfect graphs is precisely the sky g equal to omega g. In that case, we can bound, we can get the exact, this is a large class. And in that, for that class, we have the uh, resurgence and asymptotic resurgence. And while we were writing up, or you know, we, I think we had already, after writing it up and putting it in an archive, uh, <coughs> Villarreal contacted us saying that, you know, they also have proved, but of course using very different techniques. Uh, they have obtained this uh, uh, lower bound, actually. <coughs> and then of course the corollary. So this is, uh, you know, uh, again, our exploration continued in the case of uh, by, I mean, uh, edge, I mean, cover ideals. So they have proved that G is bipartite if and only if J, G power S is, these two are equal for all S. We, in fact, generalize it to say that uh, this is equal, I mean, rho and asymptotic resurgence both are one if and only if, I mean, is equivalent to saying that G is bipartite. <clears throat> uh, so we, uh, I think I'll rush through uh, some of the results. Uh, so we have some more computations of uh, resurgence and asymptotic resurgence. Uh, and then 
we have few more results in the case of edge ideals, which uh, again, you know, this is again a result of simis baskin Villa villarreal where they say that it's bipartite if and only if these two uh, coincide, but we, we have it for in the more general situation. And we compute resurgence of uh, edge ideals in some cases. <clears throat> So uh, I would like to just conclude with some questions uh, in the sense that what are the, some open questions in this direction. One is the first one that I discussed, Hunnicke's question, whether given a high two prime ideal in a, a three-dimensional local, local ring, is the third symbolic power contained in uh, P square. <clears throat> and then the stable harbor conjecture is still wide open. And identify classes of ideals for which stable Harbon or Harbon's conjecture is true. And then we have proved several results for the edge ideals, uh, cover ideals of uh, graphs. Uh, one can think of uh, generalizing this to the hypergraphs so that it will be, you know, it is valid for more general class of square free monomial ideals. And then bounds for resurgence and asymptotic resurgence. Uh, for edge ideals. We have mainly got it for cover ideals, similarly for edge ideals. <coughs> uh, with that, I conclude. Thank you for your attention. Uh, are there questions? Yeah. yeah um, this time, let me give you the microphones. Yeah, but uh, I guess the point is that anybody on the um, Listening remotely can't hear it. So. Sorry. Uh, Jayantan, uh, somewhat tangentially related question for either edge ideal or cover ideal. Do you think we have any hope of describing symbolic powers, not just for lower powers, but all symbolic powers in terms of the graph? For edge ideals, it is described for some uh, classes, for example, cycles. Uh, but I'm talking about in general. In general, it uh, for square it is, I know, second uh, symbolic power. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but as far as I know, uh, it, it, it will be tough. I mean, of course, we are looking for the non-bipartite mm -hmm. case because bipartite, all these are same. Right, right. In the non-bipartite case, I think unicyclic graphs, uh, I think there is a description. For the non-unicyclic graph, uh, I, For unicyclic, you uh, mean just one cycle? One cycle. So okay. one odd cycle along with a lot of, uh, you know, trees attached to several vertices. So for such graphs, the edge ideal, uh, the symbolic powers are described. Uh, but if there are two cycles, uh, I doubt, uh, and even in the bicyclic case, I doubt there is a clear description. What about cover ideals? Any description there? Uh, well, cover ideals, for the case of symbolic powers, cover ideals are slightly better in the sense that they, uh, they are, so, so for example, some of the results that we have proved, uh, I mean, if you have, if you can decompose it into two uh, graphs, that can give you some intersection results and so on. If there is a, you know, you can write it as a click sum of two graphs, that can give you some. So cover ideals, I, I have better hope, but uh, edge ideals are, uh, in terms of symbolic, power, symbolic powers, uh, pretty hard. Okay, well, let's uh, thank Jayanthan again. Yeah.